Hello, welcome to Krachwerke and it is new guitar day or second hand guitar day or podcaster guitar day, whichever you want to call it. So I thought I'd show you what happened here, number one. Uh, and then I'll also talk about, uh, I watched the video the other day um, and it was what to look out for, kind of, you know, what guitar to buy, um, where to find deals and all this kind of thing. <clears throat> and so I've got a couple of comments, a couple of thoughts I had uh, once I, uh, after I watched it, but we'll get to that. So um, on Facebook Marketplace, there was a Rockburn um, SG copy for sale, this thing here in black, and it was dirt cheap. Um, and I know the Rockburn brand because I had a friend who had uh, a Les Paul copy of Rockburn. And I remember it sounding amazing. I mean, they are cheap copies, essentially. Um, probably Chinese made, but it sounded really, really good. Had that really mid bite um, and that bottom end that I that I like. So I jumped on it. Also was a little bit keen on having another project. And I expected there to be issues with it. Um, so I had this idea of because it's cheap, because I don't really care about it, to make a nice design on it, kind of like a occultish, thin, this, you know, kind of golden angelic chart kind of design and make all the hardware either gold or, or um, brass. Um, and then I, I got the guitar and I came home and out the box, it literally played absolutely fine. It had these terribly, terribly thin, small frets on it, which I absolutely hate. And they were worn to bits, but the action was low and there was no fret bus and the guitar sounded absolutely fine. But I knew I didn't want that neck on because I just can't stand those little frets. <clears throat> so. In order not to break the bank, I went on Amazon and got a got this neck here, which is a cheap Chinese. Literally, it was forty three pounds on Amazon. So you can imagine an LP neck for forty three pounds with binding, right? Um, but what got why I ordered this one was because it said it had medium jumbo frets, and lo and behold, it has binding. It has medium jumbo frets. It was, there was nothing wrong with this neck when I got it. It fit perfectly onto this SG and any LP. It's obviously a, a bolt on. Um, now I'm, the, the, the frets were in a, in a bad way. They were absolutely level. I didn't have to do any, well, I had to do a little bit of leveling, but hardly anything. Um, but the sides were really kind of, yeah, they were bad. If you ran your hand down, you would literally cut your your um, your fingers open. So that was easily solved, no problem. That took me about half an hour, um, getting the frets level, pff, 20 minutes, no bother. The nut was pash. Um, the nut was some sort of really, you know, that really cheap C3 kind of plastic stuff. I had an old um, a bone nut, which I put on, no problem. The guitar, uh, the the tuners of the old one, of the original one, were absolutely fine. So I'm using them and they are absolutely fine. They're nice and stiff. They are exact. They are, this guitar does not go out of tune. Um, I've had this now for nearly two weeks. I've been playing it and it does not go out of tune at all. It is perfectly stable. Um, I've got uh, 9 to 42 Ernie Bowles thinkers on it. Um, now the nut was pretty cool and obviously I kind of put a bit of graphite in there and that solves all the kind of B and G string problems, no bother. Um, and so because the guitar was playing so well, I decided to go for the classic uh, and not mess around with it, but keep the, the black and the chrome kind of look. The pickups of obviously some sort of cheap knockoff thing but they sound great and therefore I kept them as well so I didn't have to mess around with any of the electronics 
Um, I did, however, get in there and spray all the pots and clean all the pots, and because they were a bit crackly, uh, sprayed the switch. Honestly, this guitar plays without a problem. Um, now, so um, what I'm getting at here is, I'll, I'll quickly tell you what I did, and I put my branding on there. But anyway, regardless. So, firstly, the neck is, is a nice, feels like a typical kind of. 50s Gibson neck, um, C shapey. Um, the binding is perfect. The frets are fine. Um, there was a shim in when I took the old neck off. There was a shim in, and then I lost the shim, and I thought, Phew. and then I forgot to put a shim in when I put it back on, <laughs> and so obviously couldn't get the action right. So when I was setting this up, um, and I made a bit of a boo boo because I I had to get obviously the neck straight with the bridge and that wasn't happening because I still had to drill the holes right so I put a bit of super glue and so that I could align the neck properly and then drill the holes obviously um, a fair choice however the problem was that because I didn't have the shim in when that happened I couldn't take the neck off again because the super glue got so strong so fast that it was too late so the neck is a little bit um, sh should have been shimmed so the alternative was to break the neck off uh, and there would have been all sorts of damage because of the super glue and I wasn't wanting to do that um, I I'll be honest right I can't believe how strong that super glue was I used just a tiny because I just wanted it to hold so that I've got enough strength uh, in the glue so that I can drill the holes uh, on the right spots and because uh, I didn't there's not enough space to clamp it right so anyway but it held so tightly that I was scared to to break it off anyway so um, the solution was see here with these little nibs go in I took them out and I drilled it in such a way that the little spacer can be sunk in because all I needed was about a millimeter and it is so these are sunk in a bit and it works perfectly fine now it doesn't matter if they're sunk in because the way that you take them out is that you turn the uh, the little screws in and then you can pull it out that way so you don't really need to um, it doesn't matter if they sunk in you know what I mean so you can still set everything as as normal as they are just set into the body a little bit lower so that's that um, what have I done to it? Uh, nothing, literally. Um, I um, I uh, leveled the frets, I polished the frets, I cleaned up these edges because they were really sharp. Um, I didn't have to do anything to the tuners, they work perfectly fine. I put nines on. I, um, yeah, this is absolutely everything is now working perfectly. And it's the sound that I want. So that brings me to the other thing, which is kind of why I'm making a longer video. I would like to suggest in this time not to buy from pawn shops or cash converters and cash generators in the UK. They don't give you enough money for trading, so rather go onto the marketplaces. I think people at this point in time might be in financial difficulties and end up having to pawn a lot of stuff um, thanks to the isolation and um, dare I say if you go to cash converters you know you're going to get rid of your item you know you're going to get the money you put it on marketplace you know you you might have to wait much longer but at least you get what you what the machine's worth you know whatever your guitar or your pedal or whatever it's worth Cash generators and these kind of guys, the way I understand it, is they will give you a quarter of the resale price and then they sell it for half price. So you can pick up lots of bargains there. But at the same time, <clears throat> realistically, you are, uh, you're you're not helping the person selling it. Um, so during this period of time, I would suggest um, trying to buy directly off of folk. That's one thing. The other thing is I wanted to quickly go through some of the things. I've done this before. I think that the best bargains are had going second hand if you want to have a quality piece of kit um, but not pay a lot for it. 
um, I think this guitar is now worth a good 300 pounds to be honest um, both from financial point of view and the work that went into it but also what you actually get just because the neck was cheap doesn't mean it's there's anything wrong with it now, I'm sure if I buy 10 of these there will be three or four duds in it I'm sure um, but at the same time maybe I was just lucky so um, the even the truss rod works perfectly fine everything is as it should be I mean it's not a PRS neck or anything like that but it is absolutely solid perfect and it works and it does its job um, I can't tell you what the fret material is made from it doesn't it just looks like standard kind of it's, I don't know but it doesn't seem overly soft because while I was um, leveling them and getting these little fret ends cleaned up you had to work them so it wasn't like the softest crappiest material either so anyway if you're in the market for a guitar and you want to get something interesting go look online I'm sure you do it anyway but buy from people but there's a couple of things you should look out for there's a there's like a list make sure the tuners turn nicely that there's no play make sure the uh, the nut um, is not wonky and weird and doesn't stick over the edges make sure that there's no cracks in the finish because sometimes the cracks mean that there's you know cracks underneath in the wood as well um, look down at like this and see if your um, strings are aligned from the bridge all the way down and that spacing on either side is okay especially with something like this which is essentially a, a, a part guitar you know somebody went and messed with it make sure the parts the, the parts don't crackle um, although that's usually not a difficult fix um, make sure the action is low and there's no fret bus the moment the action is high or low and with fret bus uh, you're gonna probably sit there with lots of setup problems and if you can't do that yourself you're going to be spending 40 50 pounds for a setup anyway and because you don't know if the neck and the whole action thing is okay you don't know if you're going to be spending your money on something that is actually worthwhile because the guy might come back and say sorry there's too many other issues there's all sorts of fret issues or whatever so um there's a couple of things that are easily checked out um, and uh, you can get yourself a really nice guitar. So um, I've got the 1960s uh, Epiphone um, Les Paul, which I love. Um, and I've got a vintage, which I just changed the pickups on, which sounds great. And once I've made this one, once I've finished this one, this is now my go-to guitar. Oh, I want to quickly play, but boom, I picked this one up. And that's what happens, you know. It doesn't have to be the fancy one uh, that you always grab. Which brings me to another point. If you've got something like this, you've got a really nice guitar that plays well, sounds good, and at the same time, you don't have to be all precious about it because, you know, it's not a thousand-pound guitar sitting there that you are treating like it's a, you know an unhatched egg so um i wonder if we should plug this guy in quickly now i've not got the amp mic up. who cares who cares don't know how this would sound looking for that kind of lower mids heavy I didn't 
tune this. It's not entirely in, it's not entirely out. just giving you an idea there's one more thing I'm doing to it ah pick where the fuck are you ah lost my pick anyway there's one more thing I'm going to do which I uh, I fucking hate the neck dive on these bastards so uh, I bought some new uh, little strap plugs or whatever you call them and I'm actually gonna put it in here and that really solves a lot of the neck dive because currently it's right at the back there. So the trick with these is that the problem is that um, it is quite thin. Just uh, but if you look at Ibanez and stuff, they they put their little strap thingies in even thinner pieces. The problem is that you've got this weird angle, uh, and you can't get a drill <laughs> uh, to fit in here to try and drill that so I'll try and solve that problem today they should be arriving today because as much as I love this standing up having this thing over your shoulders um, with the neck dive pisses me off so um, I have to solve that neck dive problem the body is massively heavy um, the neck is actually quite light and was lighter than the one was on it but it's still neck diving so we'll see if I can solve that anyway Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I'm currently working on um, a video um, and it's more around mixing. Um, and I only used this guitar for all the parts, the lead parts and the rhythm parts, etc. So look out for that if you want to hear what this thing actually sounds like properly going and in a mix. Um, that would be the thing. Standard tuning, by the way. So there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> 